so, so happy with this piano. Um, this is a piano I've used many times in performance and also in recording. It's a, a modern copy, it should be said, of an instrument from Vienna from about 1822. Um, an instrument that is modeled after Konrad Graf, who was really one of the most important builders in Vienna at this time. This is a modern reproduction that was built by Rodney Ruggier in 1989, and it was totally overhauled and reworked by Edwin Bönk in Enschede, and now belongs to his collection. It's a latish instrument to do all the Beethoven concertos on, if you bear in mind that he was writing from the 1790s well up into 1809. This is a, a six and a half octave piano from 1822. It has two things, it has incredible brilliance and clarity, especially in this whole register, but it also has real tenderness, which is, is very, very helpful um, to express the more lyrical components of these five concertos, but it's a terrific piano. It projects well in large halls, and here in Rotterdam that is um, uh, a kind of major priority for us. It's in such con good condition, it holds its tuning beautifully, it's wonderfully expressive in every register, um, and it blends so well with the winds as well of the orchestra, and. Uh, yeah. Any first comments? Hello? We stay up fans. Each of them has such an individual character and personality. Um, the first written concerto is in fact the B-flat, um, which we now call number two. And of all of the five, it has undeniably the most Mozartian characteristics. And you can understand Beethoven is writing a concerto in the few years after Mozart's death, the pressure to live up to this expectation of this highly cultivated, highly sophisticated late 18th century concerto style is tangible in that piece.
He, there are unmistakably Beethovenian touches in the B-flat concerto. But the whole structure, the whole tone of the piece, no trumpets and drums, the whole lightness of the, of the texture is clearly Mozartian. I like to think that these cadences need to be a bit bolder, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more throwing caution to the wind, um, because it inspires the orchestral playing in different ways as well. And these aren't just moments of crystalline perfection and, and careful virtuosity like you see in moments. They're moments of reckless abandon. between written out, written out composition and fantasy and improvisation, this incredible blurring of the lines between a sort of written out fantasy slash complete free fancy. Mm -hmm. 